is there chapter 4, verses 4 to 6 states, When the Lord has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and purged the bloodshed of Jerusalem from the midst, by the spirit of judgment and the spirit of burning, then the Lord will create over the whole area of the Mount of Zion and over her assemblies a cloud like the even smoke and the brightness of flaming of a flaming fire by night. For over all of the glory will be a canopy. There will be a shelter to give shade from the heat by day and refuge and protection from the storm and the rain. We know that's how the beautiful prayer has been to give to consider God's will. Holy God and Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to look into your word and we ask that you may open our hearts or minds to receive and to understand from you that which you will say to us in this hour. There are these things in the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Remembering that this passage that we have been considering, Isaiah chapter 4, verses 2 to 6, is talking about something that was yet to occur sometime in the future as we observe. And remembering also that it did occur, based on what we saw last week, it did occur some 700 years after it was prophesied by Isaiah when Jesus Christ came as a man and lived in Jerusalem. We must see that the purging, as we have read in verse 4, we must see that the purging by the spirit of judgment and the spirit of burning must be connected with that same event in the coming of Jesus Christ. Just as we saw that it was with the coming of Jesus Christ that the fulfillment of the promise made by God to send a branch or to raise up a righteous branch to accomplish the redemption of his people, just as we saw that connection, we must also see that with respect to the purging by the spirit of judgment and the spirit of burning, that too must be connected with the coming of Jesus Christ on earth. Now, as we did last week, or as I requested last week, I'm going to request of you this morning also, that you bear with me and try to go along with me, because again this morning, we will be doing much preaching. We'll be doing some studying. And I believe it's crucial for us to do that, for us to understand, put into proper perspective what Isaiah is saying here. Because remember, he didn't write to us directly, he wrote to the children of Israel many, many, many years ago. But it was written for us, and so we need to understand. And we need to go back into his time, and probably before his time, for us to grasp what he is saying and make the correct application to ourselves. So, so the passage that we are dealing with talks about the removal of the iniquity from Jerusalem. The removal of the iniquity from Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And I'm saying that we need to connect that with the work that Jesus Christ came to do. We know that Jesus Christ came to accomplish the salvation of all of the people that God gave to him. But in that connection also, we are saying that this removal of the iniquity of, from Jerusalem that we prophesied about must have taken place at that same time when Jesus Christ came to accomplish the redemption of God's people. To do this, I want us to go back to one of the passages that we looked at last week, and that is Zechariah chapter 3, verses 8 to 10. Zechariah chapter 3, verses 8 to 10. The passage says, Now listen, Joshua the high priest. You and your friends who are sitting in front of you, indeed they are men who are a symbol for birth, a symbol 
For behold, I am going to bring in my servant the branch. For behold, the stone that I have set before Joshua, on one stone are seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave an inscription on it, declares the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of the land in one day. Verse 10, in that day, declares the Lord of hosts, every one of you will invite his neighbor to sit under his vine and under his fig tree. The removal of the iniquity of the Lord is vitally connected with the work of Jesus Christ. The iniquity of the land is the rebellion of the people of the land against God. The iniquity of the land is the same as the sin of the world that we will read of in the New Testament. And with respect to this removal or its removal from the land, this is how John the Baptist, when he was preaching on it, this is how he presented, presented it to us as recorded in the scripture. The Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 29. The Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 29. There it says, the next day he, referring to John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And Jesus did this in one day when he died on the cross. Alright? So when Isaiah spoke way back of the removal of the iniquity from the land, when it was about time for it to be fulfilled, this is what God presented to us through John the Baptist. When he saw Jesus Christ coming, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away, and we can put there, the iniquity of the land. Takes away the sin of the world. And as we all know, Jesus Christ did it in one day, just as it was prophesied or predicted by Isaiah that it would be done. The iniquity was removed in one day when Jesus Christ died on the cross. That is when the iniquity of the land was removed. So the removal of the iniquity was accomplished also, as Isaiah said, in the spirit, in the spirit of judgment, because we know that Jesus Christ was judged, wasn't he? He was judged, he was found guilty, and he was condemned. Remember it says, in the spirit of judgment. So whether the judgment was just or not is not really the issue right now. It was done in the spirit of judgment, and it was also done in the spirit of burning, because we know that with respect to God's judgment upon sin, it is often presented to us in the context of burning in hell. So it was done in the spirit of judgment and in the spirit of burning, just as Isaiah predicted that it would take place. So God removed the iniquity of the land in one day when he fulfilled that predict prediction, that prophecy that was made by Isaiah in what Jesus Christ accomplished when he accomplished our salvation. Then we come to the next thing that he says, and that is that there will be the glory of God among the people of God. Verse 9, to read it again, says, sorry, not verse 9, verse 5. Verse 5 says, that is verse 5 in Isaiah chapter 4. Verse 5 in Isaiah chapter 4 says, Then the Lord will create over the whole area of Mount Zion and over her assemblies a cloud by day 
even smoke, and the brightness of a flaming fire by night. After the purging, after the removal of the iniquity, what is presented here to us is that the presence of God or the glory of God will once again be with or among or upon his people. This is what Isaiah prophesied. For he says, as we have read, that there will be over the whole area of Zion and over all the assembly of the people a cloud by day and a bright burning fire as it were by night. Isaiah is here using a picture that was used in the Old Testament before him to represent the presence of God among his people. So for us, I believe, to understand what he is talking about, we need to go back to what he referred to and see how that picture was used in the times before him to represent God's presence among his people. And that presence of God among his people being represented by a cloud and by fire, it all began when God took or brought his people out of Israel, up, out of Egypt. When he brought his people out of Egypt, out from under bondage, and led them to the promised land that he had promised to give to Abraham and his descendants. It began in Exodus. And we will look at a few passages in Exodus just to see exactly where Isaiah got this picture that he is using for us to represent the presence of God or the glory of God among his people. Isaiah chapter, sorry, Exodus chapter 13, verses 21 and 22. Having brought the people, his people, out of Egypt, out of bondage, the scripture says to us, the Lord was going before them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them on the way, and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light, that they might travel by day and by night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. So we have that stated to us in the scriptures. But in addition to that, God also made his presence known by meeting with and by speaking to Moses in the tabernacle that he commanded that he build. God also commanded the children of Israel to build a box that would have been placed in the tabernacle. And in that box was the written covenant that God had made with his people. And upon the box was also to be built what God called a mercy seat and two angels. And the whole thing together was called the Ark of the Covenant. And this is where God met with Moses and spoke with him. And we see this in Exodus chapter 25, Exodus chapter 25, verses 21 to 22. In speaking with Moses, God said, you shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark, and in the ark you shall put the testimony which I will give to you. There I will meet with you, and from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim, that is, and those are the two angels, which are upon the ark of the testimony, I will speak to you about all that I will give you in commanding, in commandment for the sons of Israel. <laughs> 